Welcome back. A San Francisco startup backed by investor Peter Thiel could make major waves in the semiconductor industry. Substrate raised more than $100 million in seed funding, leading to a $1 billion valuation. Substrate says it has reinvented a part of the chip making process with a compact machine using laser light to etch patterns on the tiny pieces of technology. Substrate plans to build manufacturing sites in the United States and produce its first chips within three years, positioning itself to rival competitor ASML, which some critics are calling implausible. Joining me now is the man himself to walk us through it. He is the CEO of Substrate, James Proud. James, welcome. Good to see you this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, these are very big ambitions. Tell us about Substrate and what you think you can do. Walk us through this technology and how you're competing. Of course. So we all know how critical semiconductors are to the AI revolution. They're in, they're in all of our pockets right now. But, but what people forget is that fundamentally, America invented all of these critical technologies that power semiconductors. And if you look at this process, the most critical part of this is actually that step that you spoke about, lithography. This is the printing of those tiny, tiny patterns. And, and about 10, 20 years ago, the United States lost this technology despite inventing it. And so what we really see that we're doing is a return to, to the tradition of America inventing and actually commercializing the next generation of advanced semiconductor uh, technology. Well, and if you're able to actually... Yep, no, go wait, ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. And if, if you're able to do this step much, much uh, lower cost than you currently do, then we can actually make the the lowest cost semiconductors in the world here in the United States. And of course, we need it more than ever with the AI boom and this need for power and rare earth minerals. James, tell me about that side of it, because the president has been working hard to secure deals for rare earth magnets, which, of course, have been refined in China. Yeah, 100 percent. And so the president has shown how critical bringing these supply chains back are to the United States and not just the end manufacturing, but the, the critical parts of that supply chain as well. And so what we what we really see is that if we're going to win this AI race, we need to be owning both the manufacturing, but also the core inputs into that supply chain. And that really with substrate is, is, is a key part of the mission here. Well, let's talk about the competitive uh, race with China, because the president is working to put America first in this AI race. The president is going to be meeting with Xi Jinping tomorrow in South Korea. They're expected to discuss trade and rare earths, chip export controls and more. James, what do you want to see from China in a deal? Chip making, obviously, is a national security issue now. And you've been outspoken on reducing our reliance on Chinese technology. Well, I have a very traditional view of the office of the presidency. And, and when the president of the United States says that something is critical for the United States to do, I take that as an American very seriously. I sat in the audience when he unveiled the AI action plan. The president said, we invented the light bulb. We invented chips. What are we going to invent next? And so I see our work really as, as fulfilling the president's goal of winning that AI race. And, and this is critical to win. So how will you do it in terms of participating in this at Substrate? You just talked about uh, manufacturing uh, this and, and a competitor to ASML in America. Tell me about the process of doing that. How long will that take? And, and, and where are you in the process today, James? Yeah. So our goal is to have a facility up online in 2028 producing final wafers, the most advanced in the world here in the United States. But that process has been a very long one. And the work that we've been doing, it's, it's incredibly, incredibly hard. I think that people forget that America does very hard things. The question is, do we as a country see it important enough to, uh, to do, actually go and do that? And this is one area where I think that is absolutely critical to the United States that we do succeed. And so for the past three years in, 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 in secret, we've been working on with U.S. national labs to build and to demonstrate this technology. And, 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 and frankly, the, the current administration have been incredibly supportive of that. And we wouldn't be here with these results that you have on your screen right now if it wasn't for Secretary Lutnick, Secretary Wright and the, the whole administration. So what else do you need in terms of getting up and running before 2028, James? The president is trying to get these supply chains in place as soon as possible because he recognizes that we are still reliant on the China supply chain when it comes to rare earth minerals. How important are those rare earths for your company? 
So we've been very, very mindful. As you said, I've been thinking about this for several years now. And so we've done a, a very good job internally at trying to design our supply chain to not be reliant on foreign inputs, especially from, from China and those rare earth materials. So we've actually been sourcing things here from the United States and from domestic manufacturers. And so like that has been a, a very conscious part of our effort. When it comes to the spend that's going on in AI right now, we see that there is a huge influx in capital to these data centers, to these supply chains. And so there's not been a better time to actually build these facilities here in the United States. But what's your take, though, on all that money, James? I mean, I think it was Jensen Huang who said, look, we're going to see 3 to $4 trillion in spending on AI infrastructure. Don't we need to see an ROI, a return on investment at some point before we actually see more money coming in? This is a lot of money. Do you believe it? It's a huge amount of money. I actually think it's going to get even more. And so we all know the chat GPTs, the Groks, how these can make us more productive, help with coding. But it's really important that the, 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 the results that we've gotten, if it wasn't for Jensen and his GPUs, we would not have gotten this. And so everyone sees the commercial and the consumer products that we all know and love, but actually these GPUs are so powerful and they've enabled us to do things that previously people would have thought would have taken decades. In, in, in days. And so we see that productivity on our end. And so I think this is going to continue. So like what? What can you tell us in terms of what you've seen? So a lot of these computations that go into this, like, like modeling this light, modeling these processes, how the chemicals interact, these are things that would have taken a lot of time on traditional CPUs and, and really calculations by hand. But with these GPUs, we're able to do things that, as I said, would have taken months or really years and actually begin to do in minutes. And so that, that AI productivity boost, we, we see that on, on our end, and it's not a 10%. These are thousands of percent increases in speed. But this is also very expensive. I mean, when you look at what goes into the fabrication process to make semiconductors, is it much more expensive to do it in the United States? Why are we scrambling to get these supply chains here now? And what is the bottom line for companies that are doing that? Uh, more expensive in the U.S., right? So I think there's a national security imperative that overarches any cost. Yes. And so the work that President Trump and Secretary Lundick have been doing to get domestic fabs up and running, to get foreign companies to build fabs in the U.S., this is all critical. I want as many wafers built in the United States as possible. But I think that it's also critical to look at what comes next. What does the next generation fab look like? And that's really the work that we're doing. And for that, we see it as if you can reinvent critical parts of this manufacturing process, innovate, we can actually lower those costs and have the lowest cost wafers in the world. And so it's through technological innovation that we think that we can also not just own the current manufacturing, but also the next generation. All right. We will leave it there and we will watch your progress, James. Thanks so much for being here and I hope you'll come back soon. Thank you, Maria. Thanks very much. 100%. Congrats to you, James Proud.